Hello everyone, welcome back to The Stationery Writer. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite ink brands. Uh, I guess I'm going to be sharing three favorite ink brands uh, and my number one, which you can probably already tell what it is and if you follow me on Instagram at all you're going to know what it is. Um, but my favorite ink brand of all time that I've ever tried is called Linen Toolbar. It's like all of these. And they, if you've never heard of them, they are a Taiwanese brand. I first discovered them through Yoseka, I'm pretty sure, because I honestly think Yoseka was the only place to carry them in the US for a long time. I do think maybe one or the two shops have started to carry them now because they've kind of grown in popularity. Uh, but I know for sure you can still get them from Yoseka, which is usually where I buy them. Um, so. Basically what I'm going to do is just talk about, uh, I guess, why I love these inks so much and tell you a little bit about, um, I guess, the different lines they have. Uh, and then I'll talk about my other two brands. And then what I also have is basically a lot of swatches and I kind of brought out my like swatch archive um, just to show you that <laughs> I have tried a lot of ink brands at this point. Um, so, and I, you know, I've really decided like you know, I feel like I've just found what I really like, and I'll tell you why, and you know, if you value those same qualities and in inks, then that, you know, these might be some brands or inks that you want to try. So without further ado, uh, I think I'll just jump in. So um, what I'm going to do first is just show you, basically, Lennon Toolbar, I don't know if they have a lot of different lines of ink exactly, but I want to highlight one specific thing that they do have. It's called their Atmospheric line. And this is actually their waterproof inks. And um, I think this line of inks that they make is probably what got me like addicted to them in the first place. Um, this is a, I actually lost the label. Um, I don't even know how, but uh, this is just like, um, if I could only pick one ink forever to use, it would be this one, which actually this is a new bottle I just got because this one's almost empty. It's called Cloudy Day, and it is, it's their, again, atmospheric is what it's called. And it comes in, I think there are six colors total. There's an orange that I've never bought because I, I just don't really use orange, to be honest. Like it's a, seems like a pretty bright orange, um, but I have all the other ones. They have blue sky, which is a light blue, night sky, twilight, firmament, and the cloudy day. And I'll show you swatches of all these, but, um, you know, waterproof inks aren't necessarily like essential, uh, but the reason I like them is because a couple reasons. One, you can highlight over them, you can paint over them, you color over them, you know, once they're dry. Uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, another reason is I feel like they're going to last longer. You know, waterproof inks are usually light fast as well. So if you're doing something like memory keeping and you really want the, you know, your text, your writing, your drawings to stay there for a long time, uh, you might want waterproof ink. Um, so I I'd say that's for me the main reason. Uh, the top two reasons I wanted to try and find a good waterproof ink is I want to be able to highlight stuff and you know I, I keep a memory book for my daughter and I really want those pages to stay intact so uh the fact that they have waterproof inks and in, in a couple different colors as well um all really good points for me and you know one thing I want to show you as we talk about waterproof inks is I did try a lot of other different ones and I'm going to show you some of my you know tests and swatches from doing that um, and honestly, one of my other favorite inks is another waterproof one, which I'll show you. Um, but so here is the cloudy day, uh, a little test I did. This is Midori paper. So, uh, it's pretty much dry within 15 seconds and you can highlight and you can watercolor. I mean, it, after a minute, you can watercolor over. It doesn't budge which I think is pretty good, you know, and the one, I'd say the one flaw with this is it's, it is not a pure black. It has, you know, probably a little bit of a gray undertone, which I personally think is really beautiful, you know, especially for writing. 
Um, I could see why if you were sketching, you may not want to choose this one, um, and which is why I think this is also a really good pick. So the other waterproof black that I absolutely recommend is the De Atramentis Document Black. Um, let me see if I have the swatch. So this is the, the Document Black, and I thought I had the seconds. But this one is also ready, like, you can highlight in about 15 seconds, and I think, like, after 30 seconds, it was water, watertight, like, um, so the De Atramentis is a really good pure black that's, you know, archival, waterproof, and, you know, I tried, let me see, so of all the ones I tried, another one that's, like, really beloved is the Sailor Kiwaguro black. Uh, but I honestly just found this one to take a lot longer to dry. So I, I wasn't a huge fan because, again, I want to be able to water... Or, sorry. I mean, I do a little watercolor. But uh, the, the big one for me is being able to highlight stuff, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. Like, you know, in my planner or in my journal or whatever. Uh, so I just found that the Sailor Kiwa Girl took way too long to dry. I didn't really like it. Um, the other one I tried is a Kakimori waterproof black. And... You know, this one's okay, but a similar problem. It was just taking longer to dry compared to uh, this one. And the last one I tried, so the document, the Kiwakuro, the Kokimori. Um, there is an R&K sketch ink. I think the color is called Lottie. That one is also kind of popular, but I, I also found that one to take a little too long to dry and to clog pens pretty bad. Um, so, oh yeah, here's one more. So actually this is good to point out because I don't see this one online a lot, um, but Boonga Box makes an Eternal Black, it's called Eternal Music, sorry I don't know why I called it Eternal Black, but uh, I'd say this one was also pretty good to be honest. Um, it was dry in about 15 seconds and it's a good pure black, but ultimately still not my favorite. Um, so, you know, I think I still have that one, and I do use it sometimes because I want to finish it. And it, it definitely, I think, is competes with this, but it's so expensive. Like, this is a pretty expensive bottle of ink, so I just don't see any reason to ultimately buy this one over this one because this one does perform better and it's cheaper. Um, the other aspect for waterproof inks is, like, clogging up your pen. Um, most of the other ones I mentioned, like the R&K sketch ink, uh, as well as the, um, what was the other one? Oh, the Sailor. I felt like those all kind of clogged your pen pretty bad, like when you're trying to clean them out and stuff like that. Uh, this one does pretty well, uh, as long, I would say, as long as you're using your pen pretty regularly. If you do leave your pen sit, you're gonna have a little bit of a tough time with this one. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, but the Linen Toolbar inks, I have never ever had a problem cleaning this ink out of a pen for any of their lineups, even the waterproof inks. I don't know why when I clean a pen that has had linen toolbar ink in it, it just comes like I use a, a bulb syringe to, you know, just kind of squirt water through them and they just, they come clean so quick with this ink. I, I don't know why it's magic, but, <laughs> um, so linen toolbar is super friendly to your pens, even the waterproof inks. And I, you know, they're very easy to clean out. So, um, let me just try and find, so I'll show you the color swatches for the atmospheric lines. Um, and this is my current method of swatching is I use uh, little swatch cards. And then this is a um, traveler's notebook card holder insert. So this is the night sky color, which is like a dark blue. And then we've got the Firmament, which is a dark green. And I actually want to show you guys a quality of these inks when you write with them. That's really beautiful. Uh, give me just a second. Uh, let's see. That's the blue sky. It's a light blue. And then the Twilight is also really gorgeous. It's like a gray purple I would say. Uh, this, this one. 
So basically what I want to show you when you write with them is one quality of these atmospheric inks is that they kind of, as you write with them, they kind of look a different color than what they dry ultimately, which is kind of a really, I think it's a really nice writing experience. Um, and I'll try and show you that. So that's all the color swatches for those. Um, so I've got, and I think the, the green, the firmament shows this like particularly well. So I've got it inked up here and let me try. I will zoom in if I can. So it is a very nice green, but as it dries, it almost dries to a like matte looking, um, I don't know how to describe it, just a, a little bit of a more earthy green kind of matte shade. Uh, and it's more noticeable the broader the nib you use, but uh, I just think that it, it's a really gorgeous writing experience, um, and let's see if I can grab a highlighter and let's see, that's probably been, that was probably about 10 seconds, but you see you can already highlight over it with no issues. So yeah, uh, those are just my ride or die. <laughs> uh, Linen Toolbar Atmospheric is, they are incredible inks. So I would highly recommend those over, <laughs> I mean, just, yeah, love these. They're amazing. Um, maybe I'll dip this one real quick. Uh, this is the Twilight. So like I said, it's kind of like a nice gray purple. Word twilight? I don't know why. Uh, sorry, this one's a little more empty than I thought it was. Alright. So yeah, um, looks, I'd say, like a little more purple as you write, and then dries to like a matter gray purple. So uh, I think that's a pretty unique property. Uh, I think it's again it's very like pleasing as you write and then it dries to look very very nice so uh, I think those inks are incredible you can kind of see that drying so anyway so that's the atmospheric line and then honestly I, I don't think the rest of their inks follow any kind of specific line uh, they basically tend to release like seasonal colors every quarter um, and then they usually have a tea collect. I, I guess they have another collection, which is like tea inspired colors. Um, so this is the Sun Moon Lake Black Tea. Um, and I, this is, I have two of the tea ones that I'd kind of just recently got. Um, but I don't think they don't have any different properties compared to their other inks that I, that I can tell. They're just kind of a, a color inspiration kind of thing. So, um, they, like I said, they release new colors every quarter, I think, uh, usually four colors for the season. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, there's not much more to say. I've, their non-waterproof colors also perform, you know, really well. They don't clog the pens. Uh, what I want to say about Linen Toolbar that I think makes them so pleasing for me to write with and again, you know, assess your own tastes and decide if that's something you're interested in. But I find that Linen Toolbar has a really smooth, wet flow, which even, you know, this was a fine nib. Actually, I think it was a medium fine. 
I feel in, yeah, it's a medium fine. In any nib type that I've ever used, I have felt like their inks flow very wet, very smooth. Um, in comparison to, I've used a lot of, like, I love Sailor pens, and I've used a lot of Sailor inks over the years, and I just don't love them. I don't love their inks. <laughs> uh, I find almost all Sailor inks to run extremely dry, and I just don't prefer that writing experience. Um, so this is an extra fine nib with Cloudy Day, and I just think that uh, it's just a very smooth, consistent flow. Um, I don't have... You know, again, if your pen is causing you to skip, that's one thing, but I would find that sometimes, like Sailor inks especially, it just sometimes just kind of start to run dry and skip, even when your pen's not empty. So, um, and a toolbar, just not do that. Uh, very smooth, consistent flow. And I think they put out, you know, really lovely colors. Um, they actually just started doing, they've never really done before shimmer inks, and, <laughs> um... If you've watched any of my stuff, you know I don't really love shimmer inks, but they actually, as far as I know, the first ever shimmer ink that they did, they brought out at Stationery Fest, um, and it's called uh, Ying Piao. Hopefully I'm not butchering that. And uh, turns out, if the shimmer ink is good, I might like it. <laughs> because um, I actually I, I bought this at Stationery Fest, and it's actually a really impressive ink. Uh, somehow they have managed to create a, you know, again, that smooth flowing writing experience exists <laughs> in a shimmer ink. Um, and I'll show you uh, what it looks like. I have it inked up in this pen, but um, I liked it enough that I actually grabbed the other one that they just released, which is more of a fall, fall color. This one's called Hiao Jiang. And again, Yoseka has these, uh, assuming they didn't run out of them. Um, but this one is Ying Piao, and it's like a blue that almost sheens teal, with, I guess the shimmer color, yeah. Um, and I'll show the swatch cards for those too. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, I don't know how much more I can rave about them, but their inks are great. Uh, even their shimmers, which is, you know, for me saying a lot. Um, so let me just do, like, honestly, at this point, um, most of my collection consists of Lennon Dual Bar. Um, so in this folder is just my current collection swatch cards. So um, I'll just go ahead and flip through those so you can see everything in my collection currently, but a good bit of it will be linen toolbar. So that's the atmospheric one we looked at. Um, that's matcha. And uh, I do have a, you know, I think I have like three Bungu Box inks. Um, I did not include those in my favorites just because there's nothing bad about them to be honest. They're perfectly fine inks. I just don't find them worth the cost. I, you know, I don't know why I don't know if they're that expensive in Japan or it's just an import thing, but over here they're very expensive. Um, so I, I don't think I would buy any more. Deep Mountain. Um, uh, Kakimori is actually the next one we're going to talk about. I actually do really like Kakimori inks. Um, I have tried, I guess I'll just start talking about other things I've tried. I mentioned Sailor. I kept these Sailor shaders because I think they're good for calligraphy, but ultimately I don't use them in fountain pens because they still run very dry. And Aurelium, they're okay. I, <laughs> they just didn't impress me, but they didn't leave a negative uh, impact on me, I guess. Just nothing. I didn't find it. Oh wait, I flipped the wrong way. Um, just didn't see anything special with theirs, I guess. Uh, Bird Monster is a great color. I mean, obviously I really like these greens. Um, the Aunt Chair is a really great, like, olive green. Um, love that one. Uh, Ferris Wheel Press, all I'm going to say about them is I just don't like their inks. I don't like their inks. Um, I think they're over-marketed, overpriced. They're always very pale and unsaturated, and they're just not that great of inks. So, <laughs> um, I, I think there are some people who agree with me and some people that don't, and that's fine. I don't really care if you do enjoy their inks, I just don't. Um, it's really like, you know, this is all personal preference, so, you know, I love linen toolbar, but maybe some people don't, and that's totally fine, uh, because it really comes down to 
what you like in your writing experience and so that's why I'm really trying to share like the traits of these inks uh, to help you decide like you know do I like my inks to perform in these ways yes or no then will I like these inks so um, you can take that and make your own decision so um, Dominant Industry is another one I've tried. I find their inks to also be pretty dry, unfortunately. That's the T one I was talking about. It's a really great fall ink. Um, so, you know, I think I have maybe two Dominant Industry bottles still, but I just never reach for them. Uh, you know, I think I've always, like, they do a lot of the, like, literature series, so I kind of, like, fell prey to those, and every time I was just disappointed with the actual ink, so... Um, that's also another great fall one, the Bitter Orange Tea. Um, the Taranichi Guitar inks, I don't have anything bad to say about those. I think they're perfectly good inks again. Um, they're just, you know, and I still have, I think, one or two bottles of them. But again, I, I don't 100% reach for them very often. Um, I do have a couple bottles of Robert Oster. Um, I actually really like these two colors that I have, and as well as the Yoseka collaboration, but I didn't really feel comfortable adding them in this video as a recommendation, because, I mean, I don't know, there's kind of been some, like, recent drama about, I guess, just how Robert Oster's treating people on social media, and, you know, I don't really want to, I, I don't know, um... Yeah, I, there was enough there, and you can find plenty of conversation about this on, like, the Fountain Pen subreddit and stuff. It was bad enough that I feel like, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to recommend Robert Oster, but I don't know, it doesn't seem as bad as, like, the Noodlers stuff to completely throw over the brand. I, the, the Where I'm at currently is, like, I'm gonna finish my inks that I have, of course, I'm not gonna, like, throw out ink because that's silly, but I probably wouldn't buy more? You know, again, there was never any kind of, like, apology. Which, like, again, for me, if he had said, like, I was having a bad day, I'm sorry, I, I would have just forgot about it and moved on and thought it was, like, okay, fine, but, uh, yeah, I, I didn't see that, so. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, you know, again, I will say that uh, another reason I'm okay with just kind of, like, not buying Robert Oster in the future is that his inks are really inconsistent so like these two colors I like and they flow really well and they're nice colors but I've tried Robert other ones in the past that were super dry and just not like not good to use at all so you know uh Lennon Tool Bar has never let me down consistent consistency wise all their inks always are well performing whereas I don't really like the randomness that you might find with Robert Oster so okay that's all I'm gonna say about Robert Oster um Tonawan Limbs is actually a brand I tried recently because uh, they came on my radar because um, there was that hand lettering workshop at Stationery Fest from a calligrapher named Betchity, and apparently he really likes these inks for calligraphy. So I thought I would try them. Um, just didn't love again. Uh, I felt like they were... Let me try and describe I didn't love them. Um... Yeah, just not, not like, I wouldn't say they're dry and I wouldn't say they're wet, they're somewhere in the middle. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, this particular one was a scented one, which I thought was kind of weird. <laughs> um, it did have a scent. I wouldn't say it was good, but yeah, I, you know, Again, he mixes colors, and I that may be why he likes them, because he can make they mix well or something like that, but out of the bottle, I just didn't love this ink. Um, Tag Stationery, another brand I've tried. These do run drier. I like this color, but in general, I think their inks run drier, so that's another one of those ones that's just hit or miss. Um, so yeah, uh, here is, oh yeah, the Shimmer Ink swatch card. I'll show you that. So yeah, you can see the kind of like blue teal. It, it's a very subtle shimmer. I don't think it's overwhelming. And I think that's why I'm, I actually like it. Um, 
dominant industry again i love these colors and they're really better for just like probably writing headings with a dip pen um Institute, the bubble tea from Stationery Fest, which actually, if you weren't at Stationery Fest and you wanted the bubble tea, they actually have it on Yoseka's website now. So, woohoo. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So, Kobe, this is um, the Nagasawa ink. So, I bought this one. It's my first time buying the Kobe ink. I grabbed this one at Stationery Fest because it is. The color that matches the Saigon Stone Gray Decimo. Um, I would say that like these are these are good. I think um, I I don't have a like I've I've used this a lot in my my Decimo to be honest because it does look nice. Um, I it was cheaper at Stationery Fest to buy the bottle than like what Yoseka sells it for. Again, I don't know if that's a Japanese import issue so like uh, I don't think again I don't think it's worth the $40 a bottle price so I, that's again the same problem why I wouldn't buy that again but I think it was $24 for the bottle at Stationery Fest which is more reasonable because it is a large bottle and then there's the other linen toolbar shimmer so yeah so those are that's everything in my current collection and as you can see it's probably like 80% linen toolbar. <laughs> um, but again, I've just found what I like and their inks, you know, I just, I found myself, you know, always reaching for their inks. And I realized it's just because, you know, they have the best performance, the best colors. Um, you know, I don't know if they have the best price. I, I think it's like probably on par with like most of the, uh, contemporary ink brand or I don't know what the word for it is like most I mean like I think it's on par with like a bottle of sailor ink maybe a little more expensive but I, I don't know I would have to check the like per millimeter milliliter price anyway so yes that is all the talking I will do about linen toolbar um but last favorite ink brand I want to show you since we also already talked about De Atramentis. and again I've never tried other De Atramentis inks. I don't know how they are. I've just only tried the Document Black and I think it's a really good pure black that's waterproof. So um, I don't know if that's really a favorite brand so much as a favorite bottle, but there you go. <laughs> so the last favorite brand I wanna show you is Kaki Mori inks and you know, I think from talking to people, this is another one of those brands where some people just don't like them and some people do. Uh, a unique thing about their inks is they're all, I'm pretty sure all their inks are pigment inks, which does mean that they're waterproof. So that's probably one reason I'm drawn to them. And it also means that you can mix them. So if you're not familiar, Kakimori is kind of known for their ink stand, which is uh, it, it's a service they offer in Japan, like in store, but you can actually do it online as well. You can go in and they have like an ink bar and you can do, you know, they have a, a core set of colors that you can add in proportions to mix and make your own color. So, you know, I think that's really fun. And then once you find a color you like, they actually give you, let me see if it's in here. They give you a little card that has your recipe essentially, and you can always order it again if you wanted to, which I think is fun. So I also discovered them through Yoseka. <laughs> um, surprise, surprise. And um, I was actually, so they did an ink mixing event at Kakimori, or Kakimori did an ink mixing event at Yoseka a couple years ago. And I was actually all signed up to go, and then, you know, my plane never left because of a hurricane. <laughs> so I never got to go, and I'm so sad. I still have never gotten to do the ink mixing thing. But they actually still mixed me up um, a color, and they, you know, they mailed it to me. And I asked to have a color that matched, um, where is it? I asked for a color that would match this pen at the time, because I really like that pen. Uh, so that is what this purple is. Um... And again, these are all waterproof. I think they're waterproof and I don't find them to clog pens personally. 
but I, I use my pens very regularly and wash them and reload them <laughs> with new colors very regularly. <laughs> so, you know, any, any, really any ink, but especially any waterproof ink is going to run the risk of clogging if you leave it sitting around too long. So, um, that's all I'll say about that. I, I think these clean out well, especially for pigment inks. I've never had a problem. So, um, I love their little, the little bottles are very cute. The like dewdrop look. Um, I will say that's definitely like, um, brands that have the best, like the, I guess the most unique bottles in my mind are Kakimori. And to be honest, I love the bottles that Ferris Wheel, Ferris Wheel Press had, again, they're like over-marketed. Uh, their bottles are really pretty and their marketing and their packaging is all really gorgeous, but their actual ink is just, you know, underwhelming. Let me have one here. Just in case you're not familiar, um, Ferris Wheel Press always has these really well-designed bo uh, boxes and their bottles look most of their bottles they have a smaller bottle too but this is kind of their bottle design so i mean it's very cute i you know i can admit that for sure um so yeah um this one is actually i don't know if you can get this color anymore but it's called soda glass and ah i love this color so much it's a very good summery teal blue uh and again waterproof these inks are gonna stick around whatever you write which I think is a good thing but they also dry fast I'm not smudging with them so yeah Kakimori is also great um, let me try and pull the swatches for those specifically and I think you probably saw them when I flipped through but this is my custom purple and I have one of them is a um, a Yoseka. The Yoseka did two custom colors for their shop. This is one I got called Lichen. It's like a dark olive green. And let's see. Should be two more. Yeah, so this is a Yoseka one. It's called Try Me. And it's supposed to be the nice brown color of their table where you can swatch inks at their shop which I think is really fun. And yeah, this is the soda glass. So really nice teal blue. I love that one. And then, oh yeah, I have one other one. This is one that it was like a, so if you shop on their website, they have, um, they will do like, I guess you, they call them like specimen colors. And these are like, they have them for a little bit and then they're gone. I think that might've been where I got the lichen one. Um, but you, they'll just be like, oh, this was our inspiration image and this is the color we mixed up. So that was one of these. And it's again, a, a nice, um, what do you call that? Blue green, I guess, which is a color I'm obviously a big fan of cause I have a lot of it. So yeah, uh, that is, Kakimori. And again, I think, you know, you can mix their inks too. They're really fun. They're kind of known for their dip pens, which I have one here. Um, so you can kind of mix and make headers and, you know, stuff with that. And I think that's, that's really cool. So, um, basically all I have left for you now is I thought I'd flip through some of my older swatches just so you can see all the different inks I have tried over the years, and I will kind of tell you my thoughts about them. Um, zoom in a little bit here. So uh, this is an MD notebook. So, oh, perfect. So I clearly have some Ferris Wheel Press ones here at the front, and just very pale. They do, they do, I think this is another reason I just don't like them, is they just do so many shimmer inks, and as I've said, I'm not specifically a fan of shimmer inks, so, uh, just don't need that many of them in my life. Um, Sailor Studio, again, just, uh, every Sailor ink I've tried has been so dry. 
uh, Irishizuku are ones that I think, um, these are really popular and I don't really have any anymore. I don't know why. There's nothing specifically bad about them. Uh, I think they're really, they're actually really well performing inks. They're nice. Uh, I just think they come in huge bottles. Um, and I just never really, I guess, love any of the, I mean, the colors are fine, but like, I don't know, some of these colors that went into War makes, I just have fallen in love with more. Um, so, you know, nothing bad about those inks, but they don't have waterproof ones, and I guess that's something I've kind of drawn to. Uh, Birmingham inks, I was really into them for a while. They're a local, like, American ink maker. Uh, I don't ha have, honestly, I don't have anything bad to say about their inks either. Um, I thought they were fine. I was, you know, I was really into them for a while. The colors are nice. Um, as to why I stopped using them, I don't even know. I, I think, like, I don't know. I, I don't even remember why I stopped using them. There's nothing bad about them. Uh, I will say, I always felt like their inks were hard to buy because they didn't do, they didn't do writing swatches on their website. So you're, it was always just a color, like a little color swatch. I'd be like, yeah, but what does it look like when you write with it? Um, again, these are fine. Just, I don't know. I didn't love them. Uh, Troublemaker, another ink brand that's been very popular over the past years. They kind of have a lot of shading inks. Um, again, I don't, nothing really bad about their inks. Just performance wise, not, not impressive, I guess. Uh, they do run drier. Um, noodlers, <laughs> I stopped using them a long time ago. Uh, they have some similar but a little worse controversy than Robert Oster. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that. If you're not aware of it, you can go <laughs> search Reddit for it. But yeah, I don't. That's, that's very. That's that's what this swatch book is from quite a few years ago. So I do not buy or use noodlers anymore. Uh, Twisby Ink, uh, Diplomat by Octopus. I don't even remember this one, to be honest. Um, it's been sampled. Let's see, uh, very pale. Ink Institute, uh, I have, so these are ones that make me kind of sad, actually, because I thought I had Cat at Noon and I think Cat at Night, and they're really good colors, but I would say that Cat sorry not cat ink institute inks also run very dry uh, and i just don't like dry inks that's that's just my again this is a personal preference thing but i do like a better flow in my inks so a dry ink is just a no for me i think this is the only sailor color i actually still have in my collection and that's because i just love the color <laughs> but i pretty much just use it like for headings with dip pens this is actually Astoria is their waterproof line well I don't know they have other waterproof ones I guess but this is these are waterproof but they're like funky colors um, but still dry <laughs> uh, girl, we talked about that uh, another ink institute so as you can see I have owned a lot of inks over the years um, and so that's uh, just something I want to say is that I've tried a lot of ink. So that's my evidence as to why you might want to listen to me. <laughs> but again, I also think this is super, it's still a personal thing. Like you have to just decide what attributes and qualities you like in an ink. So I would recommend buying samples if you're just getting started. Uh, because, you know, you can buy like... I, I always went back and forth on this, like, sometimes the, the samples don't actually seem worth compared, like, you could pay four fifty for a sample for a tiny little bit of ink, or the bottle's like $18, and you're kind of like, well, I could just resell the bottle or something like that, and that's kind of true, I think you can sell the inks pretty easily on, like, pencil up and stuff, so you can weigh that out for yourself, but honestly, the work of having to, like, resell inks is kind of a pain, so I would... <laughs> I definitely just bought a lot of samples when I was first starting, so um, that's what I would recommend. Uh, some more tags, stationery. 
and you know, I have a couple Yoseka. I think most of the Yoseka ones are Ink Institute. Uh, that one's very cool. Similar, like sheen, sheen and shading. So many, they're very messy. So now you've seen like three, I'll show you, this is the third different way of swatching inks. Um, I used to keep a little uh, plotter mini rings, um, and that's mostly because I, I didn't buy it for that purpose. I had been using the mini as a daily carry and then I stopped, so I was like, I'll just do ink swatches in it, which I don't do anymore, but um, it was kind of nice doing it that way because you can, I would just, when I sold an ink, I would archive, you know. I would still archive the swatch so that I'd have all my swatches, um, but I would just keep the ones that I had in the plotter so I could flip through and see my inks. Uh, I think that's a fun way to do it. Uh, beat that, and that means that everything you're going to see here is plotter paper, DP paper, um, which is similar to Tomoe River paper, so just know that that's, if they look a little different, that's why. Uh, tree bark and cactus? Don't even know what brands those are. Um, yeah, I thought that was a gross color to be honest. <laughs> Emotional olive. Um, P.W. Ackerman. Uh, I bought this one at a pen show a couple years ago because I really liked the bottle, um, but ultimately I didn't love the ink. Uh, I think iron gallings are just kind of maybe a little too hard to clean out of the pens. And honestly, I mean, I'm just flipping through these so you get a chance to see a lot of different colors and stuff, so. At this point, I think we've covered all the different brands that I've tried. There might be a random one pop up in here, but... Oh, Wearing Gold, of course. I knew I forgot one. Um, also, got this one from a pen show. Uh, bought it because it said Tolstoy, to be honest. <laughs> um, but ultimately, Wearing Gold inks are also very dry. Do not love. Also, I think I mix it up. I think Wearing Gold is the one that does the literature series. Yeah, because that's how I got roped into this. I don't know if Dolman Industry does that. Um, wearing goal, if I had to put everything on a scale of dryness, I would put Sailor at the driest, followed by Wearing Goal, followed by Dolman Industry going <laughs> that way. So, um, Oh yeah, there's that body sketch ink. I don't know what happened to my test of it. Um, I do think Sailor makes nice colors. So, you know, if you do prefer a drier ink, I think Sailor's inks, you know, I think they make good colors. Um, these are from the Diamine Ink Vent 2022. Um, honestly, Diamine is an ink brand that I need to give. I think that's surprisingly missing from this video because it is a very like popular ink brand. And I have just never given it the time of day, and I actually don't know why. Like, these I just swatched with a friend who had bought the calendar. I've never bought the cal the, the Inkvent calendars. So, um, I honestly need to give them a fair try. I, I can't explain why I never have. Um, but, so, surprisingly missing opinion from this video, sorry. I don't know what these are from. Ostrich. Is that a new friend?
Take Sumi. I wonder, do they have a waterproof bag? Is Take Sumi supposed to be waterproof? I don't think it is. everything so uh, I hope that you know this is helpful for you um, maybe in just seeing a good array of what's out there to choose from or you know maybe finding something new you want to try um, and just hearing a little bit about the different properties of all these different inks and you know if you have any questions let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching